Hi, this is Rob Smythe. This is the second of two tutorials on how to pass uh, variables between view controllers. An earlier one dealt with using delegates to do the job, and this one, the second time I've used Quick Player to record my key presses and me talk to the computers as I'm talking to a person, this one will use singletons. It's pretty easy. I'll show you how it works. What we do is set up uh, a single view application and I'll call mine Singleton. I've set it up for iPad. You could do it for iPhone. Doing it for iPad gives you one extra option that iPhone doesn't have for um, doing SIGs since you could do pop-ups. So anyhow, here's uh, the view controller and uh, view controller H and M. Now we're going to be passing variables between view controllers, so that means we need another view controller. So we'll go to File, pick up another one. I gotta make sure it is a view controller. And we'll call this second view controller, targeted for iPad. So that will give me a view controller H and M file for called second view controller. Put those down in here. And now we're using a singleton and a singleton is an object. So I got to go file again, a new file, but it's not a text file. It is indeed a legitimate object. I'll call mine global variables. So when I create this, this gives me another H and M file called global variables. Now the next thing we're going to do is to go to the storyboard and set it up. I'll back off here. Here's our first view controller. Put a second view controller in. This is the one we're going to go to and pass some variables to. We go up to the inspector and tell it that we want this one to be class second view controller. All right. That that just means that uh, the second view controller H and M files will apply to this one. Okay. I'll zoom back in so that we can put some buttons and things like that on the screen. Start with a button here. We'll call go. That's going to go to this view controller. So I need a button here called return. I'm going to put another button up there called double. You'll see I'm going to use this in a minute. And we'll put a label up here for people to to look at so we can look at the values of our variables in there. And we'll put the text field up here so that we can type something in and check and see that it gets passed successfully back to that view controller. Before leaving, I'm going to draw, put in our SIG. So we click on the button, hold the control key down, come on over here and say, I want a modal SIG. Could do a popover. I showed you that in the previous one on um, delegates. Click on the SIG, come up to the inspector, and type an identifier. I'll use 2, 2, to numeral 2. Uh, in fact, I don't have to type in the, the identifier for this demo because I'm only going one place, so there it is. But if I were going to two or three different view controllers, I would want to have them each identified. So it's a good idea to do it just as a matter of habit. Now we'll start putting in the code in the global variables.h, here's what we're going to put in. What I do is I've got this typed in just off the screen a little bit in Word so I can uh, copy and paste it in so you don't have to waste time waiting for me to type. I'm going to define two variables, global string, GBLSTR, and global integer, and those will be the ones that we pass between our um, view controllers. Since they're going to change their values during the game here, we 
set properties to them, and also announce that we're going to have a method called global variables itself, global variables single object. It's just going to be an instance, actually, of the global variables uh, object. So over to the M file, and I got to pick that up here. And over we come, paste that in. The M file is fairly simple. We need to define global variables. And uh, another single is going to be the, the name I'm going to use here. Doesn't matter what name I use, actually. Synthesize the two global variables and then define this method, global variables, single object. So single object is my example of the global variables uh, object that we're using here. Okay, into viewcontroller.h, go next door and pick it up. Put it down here. And there's nothing much in it. The important thing, though, is you have to import global variables, not h here. And we'll say in our interface that we're going to have an example of the global variables object in viewcontroller. Okay. Next one, viewcontroller.m. Picking it up again off screen here. it down. And what have we got? Well, we have to import global variables.h. I'm importing second view controller.h. I don't have to, actually. If I were using delegates, I would have to. It's actually left over for when I was using the delegate method of, of passing it. In view did load, I'm going to define options single. Now, I use that variable name because I was thinking of using the global variables singleton to hold the options, you know, whether sound was on and off and so on for my game. So you can name it anything you want, of course. But I have option single as the variable name, global variables then as the class, and single object is the specific global variables class file. Okay. Here I'm defining global int as two. So notice that I don't just write global int equals two, I write option single global int equals to, right? because the global int actually comes from the option single uh, singleton. OK, NSLog in first view controller, these things had these values. I just use that for debugging. Next method, in view did appear. This method will be called when we come back from the second view controller. So it's going to just tell us, by logging it, what the values of the global variables are so we can verify that they got changed. This next one, you don't need it, but it's here in case I wanted to do a popover. Because if you do a popover, then, then, then when you return, you return into unwind from second view controller. And since you're mentioning second view controller, that's why it's up there on the import. Okay, so if I wanted to use popover, method to pop up my second view controller instead of slide up to a new one. I would use that. This one I'm not using either, as you can see, because it's commented out, but normally you would. Normally when you prepare for SIG, as this is called, you're going to go to a label or a text field and set its value into, your in, into the uh, variables that you want the next view controller to know. I just did it up in view load, right? I just defined my variable there, so I actually wouldn't need this. Okay, let's look at the last one, which is our second view controller, so H and then M file. And second view controller's H file is this. It's just a listing of the buttons, just as you expect, right? I'm listing the four buttons that I put on there. 
plus I'm declaring global variables option single as the global variable that I'm going to be using. The text field and the label are going to change, so they have uh, properties set for them. I have two um, methods. One is return button pressed, and the other will be double. I'll show you what that is in a second. And finally, we go to the M file, and our coding's almost done, and this one is very short. Put it in here. And the view did load. But we're, I guess it's not, not very short, is it? It's a little longer than the other one. But anyhow, view did load. Option single is the variable name for the class global variables specific class file single object. NS log, that's just telling us what the values of the variables are when I come back here so I could check. This one, name text field. This is the text field that I put on the in the storyboard. That's just taking the value of global string and sticking it in the text field. The next one takes the value of global enter, um, integer and sticks it into the label. It has to be turned into a string, so ns string, string with format. And this is the same as you'd put into an NS log. Okay. Now here are the the actions, the new ones. One is double, and all that does is take the value of global int and multiply it by two. So it's just a quick way of changing it, so we can verify that the changes were taking effect and being carried between the view controllers. And here we're just displaying it. So we're taking option single and stick it into the label, just as we did up in view did load. Okay. When the return button is pressed, we're going to take the value that's sitting in name text field and stick it into the global variable string. Okay, NS log that just displays it, so I know whether it happened or not. Right, and then finally dismiss the view controller, so we'll end up back in our original view controller. So that's the coding. Now I go back to the storyboard and connect the things up. It used to be that I dragged them all the way across and tried to hit the right object or drag them down to the bottom. You don't need to do that. Just highlight second view controller, hold the control key down, go down to the button and say that's my return button. Down to the double, that's my double button. I'm holding control key each time down to the label. That's my label. Down to the text field, name text field. Now the button routines, I start on the button, hold the control key, go up to there. That was return button pressed, hit this button, go up to there and say that was double. And I should have it. So let's, let's run it and see. Succeeded. Here's my sim simulator. I'm oh, if I look down here, I'm in first view controller, and the global int has value two, and global string is nothing because I didn't set it yet. Now we're into the second one. There's our value of two in the label. Now it's four. I just double it, so I change it. And we'll type in something into this field here. So if I type in my name, for example, Rob, and touch return, now we're back in the first view controller. And let's look down here. In first view controller did appear global internet, or sorry, global integer is four, and global string is Rob. So we have the values, right? There they are back. Four goes back. Change it. Return. Up down here, and now we'll global into 16. So we have successfully taken a value of global int from this one and taken it over to the second, changed it, taken it back, entered data in the second one, and ported the data back to the first view controller. So that's how you use singletons to carry data between view controllers. And of course, 
the singleton is going to hold all the global variables, so all of you controllers can be seeing those same values. You just set up each view controller as we did this one. Please let me know if this was useful to you. And as I'm new at this, let me know whether I'm talking too fast or I need to talk louder or whatever. Have a good day.